Welcome to our weekly Forex and Financial Market Forecast. My name is Jay Norris. As always, we need to remind you that trading Forex or any market are risky endeavors and not suitable for all investors. I've written a couple of books on trading which were published by McGraw-Hill. I'm also the Director of Education at Trading University and a market strategist at EOS Trade. Let's get right to the markets. First market we're looking at is the Australian dollar. You know, we, we were spot on last uh, last weekend when we said, well, we're kind of nervous uh, at the Aussie at these levels. There's no need to, to change horses. I think you're still looking at a healthy uptrend overall. It did back down, though. I guess the one thing that you could be disappointed in if you're long the Aussie or if you're you're looking to get long the Aussie would be weakness last week, particularly in the strength of the U.S. stock market performance, uh, also dollar-yen. Here, let me give you an example. Let me show you a neat chart. This chart tracks uh, so many of the markets we follow simultaneously. The blue line, in fact, is the Australian dollar. The black line is dollar-yen. The white line, that's the U.S. stock market, the S&P 500. The yellow line is the euro, and that red line is Aussie yen. What, what's interesting is you, clearly we're seeing Australian dollar weakness. Now, my initial concern would be that the Australian dollar is a leading indicator mark for the market because it has that yield. So you have to ask the question, why is the Australian dollar lagging? I think the important thing is not to read too much into that. There's no doubt about it that the Aussie is displaying weakness and in the face of definitely stock market strength, uh, dollar yen strength, uh, euro strength. But again, you know, you can't read too much into that. We'll have to see. I mean, is that is it telling us that uh, because the Aussie's uh, lagging so badly that uh, perhaps we're seeing a slowdown in China? Not sure. We'll have to see. But uh, yeah, it, it's a bit of a cause for concern. But when we come back to the individual chart, uh, the Aussie candlestick chart, I'm still looking at a healthy uptrend. I see a market that continues to put in higher lows. So that's a healthy thing. So what did we say last week? If we get a shot at, uh, if we like the Australian dollar here, if you get a shot at 103, that's exciting. If you get a shot at 101, that's even better. So let's just sit tight and see how this correction plays out. Uh, always interesting when what was a leader uh, becomes a laggard. More times than not, I think uh, the market's just taking a break. I think the strong dollar, strong dollar yen, strong stock market kind of sucking money out of the more conservative Aussie into those uh, more speculative markets. Certainly momentum plays a huge part in all these markets so uh, i'm thinking given that the aussie it's almost like the uh, a world bond market right now uh, with that big yield so maybe uh, maybe that's it uh, just money coming out of the aussie uh, chasing some of those uh, riskier faster momentum plays but uh, we'll, we'll keep an eye on things for you next market would be the euro you know euro all along we've been saying hey we think it's got a little bit more upside i sound like a broken record i do think there's a little more upside i don't think we we would view long euro uh as an investor um not at all euro is definitely a, a good trading vehicle right now and as we've said all along the closer you get to this uh this primary sell zone the more attractive potential sell setups uh, become i i've said hey i'll look for a double top against 35 even uh, to consider a counter trend short Ideally, though, you, you pop through 35, even you run some stops, and you can get a, a double top somewhere in this area, perhaps closer to 138. We'll have to see. You know, we spoke of momentum before. This market has momentum on its side. You've got momentum to the upside, albeit you're just beneath resistance. So let's see how this will play out. I think from a longer-term perspective, you need to be focusing more on any kind of topping formation in this wide zone here. Keep in mind markets being what they are momentum behind it you know you could you could see a spike higher no doubt about it but from a, a longer term perspective we still view this as a secondary move we still see the big picture as one where the the longer term pattern is bearish there you can see it so this is just a, a 50 percent retracement of this entire move going back oh uh, a year and a half or so so that's the big picture uh, we just have to stay patient and see if we do get some kind of a, a topping formation to potentially take advantage of in this area on the chart. Uh, dollar yen. Well, let's cover the pound dollar next. 
pound and dollar is another one. You know, we, we pointed out the, the recent weakness in this market. Uh, last week, you, we had uh, we point out that the day to day shifted down. You, you continue to see weakness in this market, um, albeit, uh, you know, a little bit longer term. Now you're getting in, into a buy zone here. We see pretty good support uh, down here. Oh, right around uh, 157. Uh, with the momentum you have on it, you'll probably see that also. I think we can remove uh, that uh, the top of that buy zone there. So we're looking for support down in here. Uh, this is a different picture. This is not the euro. This is the the pound, obviously. Um, here where we, we think that if this secondary pattern holds up, then um, this is going to be worth uh, taking a look at. Pound's been a, a pretty good trading vehicle for a long time and that you're mostly sideways. So... We don't see anything changing there in the big picture. Um, certainly, you know, this market can, if it, if it chips down through 57, you know, maybe you have another shot at 54. That may be a, a little bit of a stretch. We think 57, 157 is going to be a good level to watch for uh, potential longer term setups. Um, again, you have to look at it a, a bit like the Aussie. It, it's definitely weak now. Uh, you don't want to read too much into that. Uh, it has been a long-term trading range, so uh, you may just be backing down into the middle of that trading range, and we'll see then if uh, if you find support in the middle here at 157. So you can't rule that out as a, as a pretty good trading vehicle, uh, number one. And number two, let's see if support holds at 57. If you, you see a turnaround in here, we may be interested in, in going long. Now we'll cover dollar-yen. Well, can we say this is a runaway market? You know, we were talking last week uh, as far as a long-term uh, long target par 100. It just keeps on chugging, doesn't it? Uh, well, we'd wish it, it, it would give us a little bit steeper dip here, steeper correction. Um, because it's, you know, it's difficult to mark, uh, trade a market that's going up, 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 up. Uh, it's also difficult to let profits run, too, to continue to hold it uh, you know, I tell you what, one of the trickiest things in, in this business is trying to predict corrections. Um, so many times you're better off just staying with the trend, and that's the case uh, with dollar yen. Um, you know, I think we spoke last week, you know, we'd hope to, we hope we get a correction, uh, but you can't trade on hope, right? This is a, this is one big bull market. Um, you know, it, it seems to be getting a little stretched so far, but... Uh, no, no sight and top. Given that long-term uh, target is still pretty far up there, so not quite sure what to make of that as a trading vehicle. But as a, a long-term investment, obviously uh, the momentum is still higher. Um, let's take a look at the U.S. stock market. Big week in the stock market. Um, you know, we referenced this before. Uh, you got to think that that the Aussie's performance is is disappointing. In the fact, in the face of a much stronger stock market, but as I said before, we don't want to read too much into that. But we'll we'll definitely continue to monitor it. But boy, this is a pretty pretty bullish chart, and you can see that long term uh, that that resistance line up there. Let me pan out to a weekly chart. That's your all time high in the stock market. Um, another way of looking at the stock market right now is that um, you know the stock market's trading uh, all the way back where it was trading in '07. So, uh, really, the stock market's gone nowhere um, for the past uh, six years, right? So, that's one way of looking at it. And I know there's a lot of people out there, um, they'd like to see a stock market correction. They're talking about a stock market correction just because it appears a little bit stretched, uh, stretched, you know, uh, near term. But you look at the big picture, hey, it finally got back to the 07 level. So, this market's basically unchanged in six years. So, if, if it did uh, consolidate a little bit, it wouldn't surprise me um, that you go for that all-time high. I, you know, I think with the momentum in it now, you're probably going to see that all-time high. But my point being with pointing out that, you know, from, from the perspective of 2007, the market's unchanged. To me, that, that tells me there, there's uh, longer term, there's quite a bit of room up here, right? There's plenty of room up above uh, for this market. Let's take a look at the gold market. You know, a lot of traders are disappointed with the performance of gold in the the third, the fourth quarter of last year. To us, that's normal behavior. Um, you know, you hit you hit resistance right where we would expect it to be, right around eighteen hundred. We don't think you can write off gold at all. We we wrote about gold 
uh, this weekend on our uh, on our Seeking Alpha blog, and I'll 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 put the link to that on, on this YouTube video below there, so you can you can read that if if you'd like. Um, we we like gold in this area here. We think gold's worth monitoring. We point out the 1650 level uh, potentially an area to watch. And if you see it on the daily chart, you can see you can start to see it a potential head and shoulder bottom right here. We think this level's worth watching. The most interesting thing about gold and why you you can't write gold off is because um, gold's become very popular for uh, U.S. 401k holders. Gold's uh, gold very popular as it is around the globe, um, but gold uh, the last couple of years because it's performed so well, has it's really made inroads with the the younger uh, crowd in the United States. Uh, these young kids that are were working for these Fortune 500 companies, they they can put gold in their 401k. They're going to. Um, so it, it's not just that the institutions uh, started to, to ramp up with the gold, oh, about uh, five, six years ago, uh, a little bit longer than that even, where um, they decided, well, we better put, you know, six, seven, maybe even 8% of our funds in gold. A lot of the big institutions viewed gold that way. But now you're seeing individuals too. And don't think that that's not powerful. If you think of all these people working for the Fortune 500 companies, how they contribute money on a uh, a monthly basis or every other week into their 401ks, you can imagine that's going to be a lot of money going into these markets uh, twice a month. So now that uh, that it's easy enough for folks to put gold in their 401k, gold's had a heck of a performance going back the last five, six years. We don't see um, that that new trend ending anytime soon. That trend, I'm not saying that you'll continue to see gold performance. It had the last five or six years, but you will continue to see more and more people um, putting, taking that, uh, taking. You will see more and more people uh, using that option to put gold in their 401ks. What that means long term is you're going to have a bid in this market. So gold's one to watch. Hey, thank you so much, and we'll catch up with you again later in the week.